Hello, I'm Donald McIntyre of NewFination.com. This is New Financial Live, and joining us is Ron Gross, uh, MasterCoin Executive Director. Hello, Ron. How are you? Hi, Donald. I'm great. Uh, thanks. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for doing this. Where, where are you based? Uh, I'm uh, living in Israel, but I, I expect to do a lot of traveling in the next year. I've already been invited to a few conferences all around the world. <laughs> Ron, I spoke the other day to to Mike Hearn. Um, yeah. He's one of the core developers of uh, of Bitcoin, and and he, we spoke about smart contracts and smart property and and many things that can be done on top of the Bitcoin protocol. Uh, yeah. And uh, your your project, Mastercoin, is capitalizing on that. But before we talk about that, can you tell me about your uh, background? Yeah. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm an engineer, uh, software architect by uh, by profession. I've uh, studied computer science at uh, Technion University. I've uh, I've served in the Israeli army and I worked at several startups and uh, half a year at Google, Google Tel Aviv. I found Bitcoin three years ago. And I've been uh, doing uh, been involved with it ever since. I've uh, started the, or co-started the community here in Israel and uh, the Israeli Bitcoin Association, which is our uh, our version of the Bitcoin Foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, during the summer, I, I worked on a startup called BitBlue, uh, and uh, we're trying to work on, on building a, a, an investment platform for uh, Bitcoin, but as a centralized company, as, as a regulated company. Uh, yes. And this... In November, I switched to working full time on Mastercoin, which is a lot easier on the regulatory side because we're not a company; we're just building protocols. Okay, yeah, that 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 is something that I had a question. If if uh, Mastercoin was an organized entity like a company or a foundation, because uh, you show here as a Mastercoin executive director, right? Is is, so, is that honorary or how is it organized? Yeah, so the organization is very loose. We're uh, we're quite a decentralized uh, organization. We are registered as a non-profit organization in Delaware, uh, and and my my title as exec executive director is just honorary. I'm not taking any salary, and I don't have any real power except being a board member. Right, all board mem board members can vote on the decisions, uh, but uh, I don't have any special privilege within the organization. Okay. Uh, and then the development just goes on by bounties and then similar development. We're just uh, trying to increase it now, and then we're hiring a, free, a few people, but it's all as, as part of a non-profit organization. Uh, right? so ma no ma Mastercoin is a non-profit, but the, the code and the protocols you're creating on top of the Bitcoin protocols, they are open sourced. Yes, and the code is open sourced. And our entire development process is open and transparent and in free form. And anybody, anybody can pick any task they want, join in, and encode that task. Um, I, Ron, so I, I so I know that Bitcoin on Bit, Bitcoin is a base protocol. There is a currency, very successful. We all know the price of the currency and new merchants right. using it. Global in the U.S. it was recently declared not illegal. Um, so, so, so it's going to take off. It's, it's, it's already going. Um, the thing is that on Bitcoin, you can store Bitcoins. You can have them in a wallet, and then you can send and receive. And uh, to buy and sell is, is something that, that is done basically outside of the protocol, and everything right. else is done outside. But uh, with Mike, we spoke about things that can be done on top of the protocol. And tell me, tell me if what is Mastercoin? If Mastercoin is, is building things on top of this? Yeah, so Mastercoin is just taking Bitcoin as a core infrastructure and building on top of it of that everything. So we're of course aware of the developments that Mike Hearn and others have done in the areas of smart property and smart contracts. We're not using these specific capabilities in Bitcoin, but rather we're implementing similar ideas. It may be in a different way on top of Mastercoin, and that was actually just a recent addition to the protocol. We started in August without smart property, and uh, the core idea is to provide a value exchange platform 
above uh, mm -hmm. on top of Bitcoin that can be used to exchange and, and uh, represent any type of financial value, right? Be it a currency, a commodity, a stock, an existing stock like a Google or Apple share, or, or you can IPO a new share on top of it, or other types of financial uh, instruments. Okay, so, so you have we have a distributed decentralized exchange where you a, a, an open source decentralized exchange where anyone can can literally switch, swap uh, buy and sell any of these assets uh, for any uh, other asset. So the the the, the center of Matacoin's protocol is is an exchange. The center, I don't know if what you can call a center, but it's just a, a programmable layer. Uh, and, and what I like to emphasize is that Mastercoin isn't a specific feature or feature set. It's just the mindset of, of using this infrastructure as, mm -hmm. as a platform to build all new capabilities. We have different kinds of capabilities. You have uh, security features like saving accounts and spending limits. You have the decentralized exchange. You have the ability to issue new currencies. All of these are embedded within the protocol. And, and I'm sure that a half a year from now, we'll see a lot of other exciting features. You can do betting features on top of that. Also, OK. So, so the exchange feature is, is just that. It's a feature. The, the fact that uh, I can, I can uh, have a buy and sell within MasterCoin instead of using an exchange. A centralized yeah, so exchange. It, it is maybe in some way a, a center feature or primary feature because it binds everything together, right? You can exchange any type of thing, any type of asset on top of Mastercoin using using this exchange. Okay. And so you and you have the layer for for Bitcoin. Bitcoin has a unit which is the Bitcoin, and then you we would have the the the, the layer of Mastercoin. Is Mastercoin does it support it? Does it have also a, a currency? Is Mastercoin a currency? Yeah, Mastercoin is a few things, right? It is a platform uh, within with an exchange. It's also a currency, and and the currency is basically some sort of monetization model for this platform. Willet, JR Willet, uh, founded it, uh, gathered bitcoins from people uh, during August, and issued Mastercoins for these bitcoins. So people had a way to participate uh, in the success of the protocol. This, uh, for example, you can compare this to colored coins, which colored coins is another concept uh, trying to implement smart property, uh, but mm -hmm. it doesn't have a known and successful monetization model, right? You can't invest in the technology of colored coins. Mm -hmm. But in MasterCoin, you can invest in the actual technology by simply buying and holding Mastercoins. So Mastercoins are these using of account, and they're also a base currency that any other derived asset on the Mastercoin blockchain or the Mastercoin platform derives their value for Mastercoins, or is based in some way on Mastercoins. And everybody uh, that, that is a user of Mastercoin, what do they have, a wallet? Do they have to download, uh, like the Bitcoin QT, do they have to download some client or server or something like that? Yeah, so there are currently are a bunch of clients being developed. Uh, right now, they're in various alpha or beta stages. Uh, the, I, I personally have only used the Willet's original Python script to send transactions, but mm -hmm. I really need to get to get the time to, to try out these clients. But the end user, uh, we have a, comp a contest run running right now on building the decentralized exchange. And uh, on providing or uh, um, b bringing these clients to production production state status, okay. So uh, the user can download these clients. The, some of them are downloadable. Some some of them are meant to be web wallets like blockchain.info. Uh, they're not using Bitcoin QT. They're using other uh, backends. Uh, some of them are using cloud backends. So you won't have to download the entire blockchain to your computer in order to use them. And then some of them don't require any any sort of download at all. It's, they're just web wallets. Say say that I have one of those. I am a user and I have a, a, a some kind of client. It can be web or or installed on my uh, PC or a script. The yeah. the thing is that what what do I do? What do I have? A balance of master coins and then 
uh, I can send and receive. What 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 yeah. what, so, what is the functionality? Okay, all of the Mastercoin clients are also Bitcoin clients, right? Uh -huh. By design. So so you have a balance in bitcoins in test Mastercoins, which is another equivalent to to test bitcoins. Uh -huh. uh, we have a balance in Mastercoins. And once we get to the issuing part of issuing smart property and other derived currencies, you'll have a balance in each of them. Right? So you can have a balance in US dollars and a balance in, in gold and, and, and a list of uh, portfolio of, your, of your preferred stocks. Okay. So you have all these different assets and you will have uh, various screens or part of this client where you can do the exchanges and access all the all the, the functionality of Mastercoin. Right now, this is very early stage. You you just have access to to Bitcoin, to Mastercoin, and test Mastercoins, and you can do the exchanges between them. But all these new uh, features are not yet implemented. Very good. So, but in, in theory, the idea is that I will have a wallet, and I'm going to have Facebook stock. Uh, Google, Google stock uh, or gold, uh, master coins, uh, bitcoins, litecoins. I, I'm going to have multiple assets because right. you're building a protocol that that supports that. And and within the same client, I am going to be able to create my own new currencies or assets. Right. Exactly. You can do an IPO of a share of a company, and and it's not, of course, a legal IPO. It's, a, it's not, not. You know, it doesn't really represent the the shares of companies as they're known in the various legal representations or legal, legal jurisdictions. But you would do a sort of an IPO, a virtual IPO, like Satoshi Dice did on, on uh, uh, the, you know, all, all the different um, stocks platforms that we have, uh, GLBSC and, and Bitfund, all these kinds of centralized platforms. So you will have similar capabilities within your client, which is not a centralized application. Say say that I want to add an asset using my my uh, access point to to Mastercoin, and yeah. I want to issue shares of New Financial. I, I want to issue a thousand shares of New Financial. Uh, yeah. I go through the process; they're published. How do how do the rest of the people see? Do they have to go to a website to see everything that is published, or is it, is it going to show in their clients? Yeah, so this is a, a specific detail of, of how the user experience is going to work, right? And we will, we will support a lot of different experiences. We'll okay. have a Twitter feed that publishes all the latest uh, uh, shares that people issue. We'll have the clients that each of them will show it in a, a different way. We'll have a website that just shows the most popular stocks. Uh, it's just many different interfaces to the same core infrastructure. Um. And so, going back to the Bitcoin protocol, I have a Mastercoin protocol here. I have access. I can see, say that I have ten types of assets, and I issued my shares. So I manage value, my my wealth there, um, and it, it goes um, to and and back for, to to other users when I buy and sell, etc. All that movement is it. How is it using the Bitcoin protocol? How is it linked? You're using so, the, the movements are done on the blockchain of the of Bitcoin, no? It's not a separate yeah, blockchain. Yeah, so every, every single Mastercoin operation is translated to one or more Bitcoin operations. Okay. okay and and are just, you, you broadcast these operations, these transactions, to the same Bitcoin network, and they're secured and locked in the, to the same blockchain. So, so we get all the security from from the Bitcoin. So, if if I'm looking at the at the Bitcoin blockchain, I am just going to see transactions, normal transactions. It's, it's not going to show anything else. Uh, yeah, you will see normal transactions. We're trying to use the very simple transactions, and uh, we're not using scripts or any of the advanced features. And this is done on purpose, right? So, we're not trying to beta test uh, new features uh, or. Uh, rarely used features of Bitcoin. We're specifically to trying to do the simplest encoding that we can that still is in line with, with Bitcoin and with its goals. Right? We don't want to overload the Bitcoin network, so we're trying to find the best encoding that coexists with it uh, sort of uh, peacefully. But it, it's basically, at the end of the day, it's just Bitcoin transactions. And, um, and you, would, you, you need a specific parser, or that parser is usually just 
a Mastercoin client, right? Mastercoin clients are all built with a, a Mastercoin parser. So you need to, to look at these operations and parse them in a specific way to understand what Mastercoin is doing. Um, so on, on the Bitcoin layer, it's going to be normal Bitcoin transactions that represent everything that's happening on the Mastercoin uh, the Amos network. Exactly. But when, when we come to how uh, a ma one master coin, say that one master coin represents one share of Apple, where is that stated? So that, that's going to be supported on the master coin protocol? Yeah, so the analogy is not quite. Okay, yeah, maybe, maybe shares uh, or uh, master coins can represent the various stocks and assets, but uh, you won't. I mean, just to, to, to see this on the blockchain, you just need to parse the custom data, right? Each, each uh, Bitcoin operation that we do contains a custom data set that is only parsable if you interpret it within the context of MasterCoin. So you won't see any special message unless you look at it and parse it, parse it with, the Bit with the MasterCoin parser. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, yes, well, no, my, my last question is uh, about um, smart property. I, I understand how uh, on, the, on, on the MasterCoin layer then we're going to be able to, to buy and sell and transfer value uh, of multiple assets, uh, but what about um, transfers and transactions that have conditions like uh, a loan or an escrow situation? Uh, that that's yeah. going to be supported uh, also. Yeah, so our Mastercoin is completely flexible. It's uh, it's just using the synchronization of Bitcoin, but anything can be implemented on that. I'll give you an example. We can define spending limits on Mastercoin balances or Mastercoin addresses that only allow you to spend a certain amount of Mastercoins or or any other derived asset from this address per week. And this would be an effective way to, to guard against hackers, uh -huh. uh, you know, accessing your account and emptying it. So, so this is just one example, but any type of custom operation is doable on the Mastercoin blockchain. And uh, are, there, are there private companies already building on top of Mastercoin or, or is it only for now the, the protocol being built? So right now the protocol is being built and this is our focus. But we hired uh, Tariq Lewis as the smart property feature uh, owner, feature lead, and he's now reaching out to companies, to various companies and entities and enterprises out there, and, and explaining the advantages of using Mastercoin as their backend, as their issuing uh, platform. Very good. Very good, Ron. Bueno, thank you very much for your time and for the explanation. I hope we, we can talk in a few weeks or or later in the in the year before mm -hmm. it ends uh, to to track what's what's the the uh, level of, of advance in, in the in the project okay excellent thank you for having me thank you ron bye bye, bye, -bye.